interesting year so far for churches in Texas. Eight pastors have either been fired or stepped down from their positions. Here's a look at some of them. In June, Pastor Tony Evans resigned from Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church in Dallas, saying he committed a sin, leaving it at that. Gateway Church has lost four pastors in two months, including Robert Morris and Kim Toll Glasgow. Morris stepped down after allegations he molested a 12-year-old girl in the 80s when it came to light. That 12-year-old girl, who is now a woman, was on the Factor Uncensored just two weeks ago telling her story. And in Frisco, Pastor Tony Camerata was fired from Stonebriar Church, Community Church, after admitting to a moral failure. The question is, what the hell is going well, on? Well, what is going on? What's going on with Texas? And it's not only Texas, but it's nationwide with this thing. But there is a whole lot going on with Texas. And for some reason, chaos has centered within Texas. And you know what's crazy is that there's so many false teachers in Texas. And, and of course, we know they're nationwide. And we've talked about one in particular, our buddy Troy Black, the guy that hears from the Lord yeah, as we talk about every single day. He's got a video that will come out, you know, as he's trying to push his propaganda film as he heads towards the election that he asked for $30,000 for and got Marcus Rogers, another pastor that's, it, it, that said his boy. And, and he's part of this film and things. And see, these are pastors, and everybody wants to be a pastor. You know, I've been in the, I've been saved for 30 years and been in the ministry for about 27 years, somewhere in there. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. When I used to, I remember, I'm going to give you an example. I remember when I was, uh, uh, I wasn't a minister yet, but I was the custodian at my church, and I was more so in training, period. And there was a guy that was a young uh, minister there that uh, he had, was in training as well, had become, uh, as they would do, you know, you become uh, ordained and, and things. But the pastor had told him he wanted to start his own church and things. And the, my pastor, I was cleaning that day and I was being no, nosy, act like I was doing the windows. I could hear arguing back in the office. And, and he wanted to start his own church. He, he was still a novice. As the Timothy tell, tells us, you know, uh, Paul was telling Timothy, you can't be a novice and, and, and be out there in the ministry like that. You got to sit under, you got to learn. You got to learn and grow spiritually. And he insisted on going out there. My pastor said, the time is not right. He didn't want to heed the wisdom of my pastor, of, of some of his elders, you know, someone that's been in the ministry for many years. He stormed out of the church. I remember he stormed out of there angry, sped off. Left the church that point, went and got a building uh, uh, several miles away and, and started his own church. And his wife had came down with cancer, breast cancer at this time. And she went in remission and things. But then a few years later, it came back and she decided she didn't want to do treatment. They had two young kids, which I, I just couldn't understand that, like four and six years old. And she decided she didn't want treatment and prepared for her funeral and things like that. And she, she passed away at 36 years old and things. His church folded and things and he left. And he, I think he went to Texas. I haven't heard from him ever since. And that, you know, and, and that was just an example. You know, when I saw that and I would see people trying to dive into the ministry, some people are just not called. We talk about that quite often. Many people are not called, and you, that's a calling. I'm, I, I know I'm called to evangelize. I know that I'm called to counsel, but I, and that's my calling, and I was so glad that the Lord didn't call me to pastor because I was, remember, being scared when I knew that the Lord wanted me to speak his word and, 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 and you know, more so be an evangelist. And I was scared because I was like, ah, you know, I don't want to be a pastor over a flock of hard headed folks and all that responsibility and things like that. But people see, think that there's some type of glory in that. And it's unfortunately, many of these pastors that they're talking about on this, that, we, that, that you just seen on that clip, 
is there, you know, they just some got off track. And then some have been not called and been up to no good all along. And let's listen to a little bit more of that because I want you to hear what I, I, I want you to hear what the guy says that I think is an excellent idea. It needs to be marked. Every church needs to be marked that's been involved in some type of junk. Let's take a listen. All right, Eduardo, let's bring you in. Snap, you guys, you know, your, your main focus has been, but it's not limited to Catholic priests that are yes. out there. And when you see so many people like in 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 the last 20 and this is not all in texas but this is like eight so far that we have highlighted mm -hmm. is this supposed to happen that way you're exposing those who are taking advantage of people well we at snap have been dealing of course with statistics and uh with predators for over 30 years so for us it's not surprising as a matter of fact I'm very happy with what is happening. And I think that the boost that we're seeing, Isaiah, is because actually of the young people and social media, because what we're seeing now is that uh, the young people are seeing all of these allegations and all of these abuses on social media of the gymnasts, of the churches, of the schools. They are having a bigger influence now on their parents. The parents are from another generation where this used to be taboo and you didn't talk about mm -hmm. it. Now suddenly the children are changing their views of religion, which is causing the parents to then step back. That's why there is such a big decline now in the churches. Uh, the churches don't want to admit it, but that's exactly what's happening. We are very happy that people are getting involved in exposing all of these people because one of the movements that I'm starting now is that uh, we need to start calling some of these places, some of these churches that have three, four uh, people accused of molesters as mass molestation sites. Mm -hmm. So that when people are picking their church, they know the history. Because I know that if I went to a church that I was told had five molesters, I would not take my family there, Isaiah. All right, we want to. As you hear him talk about marking churches, there are sexual abuse and all, any types of things that has happened there. So that way you can avoid that. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing that burns me up. You know, everybody jumped on this bandwagon of the Sound of Freedom movie back. I was one of the first early ones. I called it out for what it was because it was really a lot of propaganda. A lot of people don't do their homework on things. They hop on this bandwagon of things of the hot topic or hip talking points that's been talked over and over and over and things like that. And these guys, I, I talked about Angel Studios being owned by the Mormons and how the sexual craziness within the Mormon religion is awful funny that they try to focus on something outside of the country and all of this, but no focus on the total chaos of the sexual abuse within the Mormon, Mormon culture. And things I talked about that. I talked about Jim Caviezel and Tim Ballard, how they're into deep. They're part of the that whole uh, cue, the conspiracy group, and all of that. So it was more so we, we talked about that. And people just, you know, oh, I got attacked. Some people though, they after they did the research, or some found out like, whoa, wait one minute, and this, that, or that. And you have all of these people, you know, and this is the same thing that goes on. So you get these people that are out here, these pastors and these YouTube teachers and all of these people, they want to try to talk about all of the sexual immorality in, out here in the world. And everybody else, somebody that has had been promiscuous, had sex before marriage, somebody that then got pregnant and not married, all of these stuff, bash these people, but they never, Talk about the dysfunction and sexual immorality within the church. They never talk about it. And they didn't talk about it with the Southern Baptists. You didn't hear a peep from none of these so-called prophets that call themselves prophets and prophetesses, Amanda Grace. You didn't hear none of them talk about the sexual immorality within the Southern Baptists that was all going on, all of the chaos, any type of some type of uh, their favorite, the politician that they're worshiping and they get caught up in some type of sexual scandal of some sort that's total chaos and, 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 and any types of pastors or religious person. And it's just amazing. You never hear nothing about them. 
but they're quick to demonize somebody that they'll say, oh, someone on the left or demonize others. And here they are, all of this dysfunction that goes on with inside the church as such as this young lady experience that we've talked about before. If my brother, and many of you know him, Edgar Wolf, had not approached me just two weeks ago with what he had seen as a teenager that bothered him all these years, his pastor in bed with his younger sister, a t-shirt and underwear on, people knew but were too afraid to come forward, and they have now. The lies and the manipulation have to stop. I was a prisoner, and you kept me in your prison. I'm a prisoner no longer. I was just 16 when you took my virginity on your office floor. And there you have a pastor messing around with a, a, a parishioner, a young, a, a child and things. And this is what's been, it's, it's, you know, and that's what I'm saying. The Lord is on the move. And I'm going to, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to make a video because I, I've been praying. And some of you, we've talked about it. I'm praying that the Lord shuts down every ministry that has placed an idol above him and that they're teaching heresy, they're elevating a politician, they're elevating the flag, they're elevating the constitution, all of that kind of stuff above him and above the gospel. I pray the Lord shuts these ministries down and close them up and expose them for all of their wickedness and their evil deeds because unfortunately, many of these people, they're not called at all. It's just the hottest trend that has hopped on because of this social media age. You know, people, someone try to come at me all oh, and say, oh, you're just doing stuff for money. Man, get out of here. I, we talked about it. You remember last year when I was telling you how I've worked night shift for over 20 years and was going to take a chaplaincy job just because I'm just tired <laughs> and I work my tail off and many of you, but I'm close to the door of retirement and things like that. And many of you gave me great advice and told me to hold on and I can go back to the chaplaincy once I retire and collect my pension and, and things like that. Took great. And thanks for the great advice and things like that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not out here scheming. I'm not coming up with phony documentaries like Troy Black. And, and, and some propaganda film and, and, and speaking from my desires, my delusion and things like that and trying to do people for money or, or, or some sort or whatever. So, you know, that was an insult to me because, you know, you guys have to know, I never beg you for any kind of money or anything. I thank for any type of donation to bless the seed of, of the, to, towards the ministry for those of you that's given over the years and things like that. But I, I don't, you know, ask and set up here and come up with some type of uh, uh, a sob story or some type of sort uh, 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 like Chris Yoon that's hiding. Or do you remember the false prophet there? He's hiding. He, he's in hiding. He's got this other channel that's supposed to be uplifting. And he'll put up some uplifting videos here and there because he knows he's trying to be slick. He didn't got caught. His lies caught up with him. He trying to go undercover and he's just waiting. He's just waiting. See, and what'll happen is if things go the way that he hopes, then he's going to pop his head up out the hole like a little mole and be excited. See, I told you guys, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I'm just praying that the Lord continues to move. I'm praying he continues to move. You know, we'll pray for anybody that's fallen because none of us are perfect. We're all capable of falling. The devil is always scheming, trying to trip us up and damage our testimonies. And many of these pastors, some of them, you know, I believe, some of them, like I say, I, I, I believe that, you know, they may have had a calling and they lost their way and they just need to find their way back. And then there's others. They shouldn't have been a pastor to begin with. And there's plenty that's on YouTube. Shouldn't be trying to call this day. They, they're not called a teacher. You know, it's, it's one of the, the Bible talks about all of the spiritual gifts as I close this message out. So many spiritual gifts. And I remember when I first got saved, we had a spiritual gift class that talked about the spiritual gifts. And the book that we were utilizing that was talking about spiritual gifts is like, until you really find out your true calling and things of what you should be doing, the gift of helps is needed within the church. 
Because, you know, I, a lot of people, the church needs help. Help with Sunday school. I mean, uh, daycare, if there's a daycare. Help with Sunday school. Help with setting up for lunches. Help for whatever. Directing traffic. There's all kinds. Of, and that's a great way to get involved as you grow spiritually to see where the Lord is going to lead you. Not everybody's going to be a teacher. Not everyone's going to be a pastor. Not everyone's going to be, you, you, you know, an evangelist. Not everyone's going to be, uh, 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 you got the gift of exhortation, the gift of mercy. You got all of these various gifts. And it's not about being in the limelight. Because in God's eyes, all gifts are equal in his eyes. He, no gift in his eyes is more important than the others. Just like sin. Yes, you have more responsibility as a pastor and things like that, and he's going to hold you to the flock and things like that, but he doesn't look down upon you if he's blessed you with the gift of exhortation or the gift of mercy and, and things like that and look at your gift as, oh, your gift is, you know, doesn't mean much. He doesn't look like that. He doesn't do that with sin as well with the gifts. Sin, in his eyes, sin is sin. So you lying and being a big time liar is no different than you going around and stealing from a bank in his eyes. So, you know, that's one thing that we'll continue to pray. Well, we'll continue to talk about it and talk about issues the church run away from. Take the devil head on, punch him right in between the chops. Evangelism for God is the channel. My name is Maurice Braxton. Until the next video, my friends, take care. God bless.